Good morning, everyone. I request everyone to please settle down and keep your mobiles on silent or flight mode. And please avoid any kind of movement in the hall during the event. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Professor S. Ganesh, Director IT Kanpur, and the entire institute community, I, Shweta Kumar, your host for this morning, would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you present here today at the Golden Jubilee reunion of the class of 1974. <laughs> this is a very momentous occasion as I'm pleased to inform you that we recently celebrated 64 glorious years of the Institute's foundation. I would now like to request Professor Kantesh Balani, Dean of Resources and Alumni, to kindly come forward and be seated on the dais. Requesting Batch Coordinator, Mr. Yogesh Khosla, to kindly take his seat on the stage. I now humbly request Mr. Balakrishna Gupta to please take his seat on the stage. Requesting Bal Balakrishna, sir. Requesting Dr. Anand Jagannathan to kindly join us on the stage. I would now like to request Professor S. Ganesh, Director IIT Kanpur, to kindly come forward and be seated on the dais. I now humbly request all our guests present on stage to please come forward for the ceremonial lighting of the lamp, which symbolizes knowledge and wisdom. Om Shubham Karoti Kalyanam Arogyam Dhan Sampada Shatru Buddhi Vinashaya Deepa Jyotir Namostute at the commencement of any auspicious occasion, Jyoti has been observed. The lighting of the lamp symbolizes abundance, prosperity, and knowledge dispelling darkness and ignorance. Thank you, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, reunion is not about counting the number of years. Rather, it's about relieving and cherishing memories and time to be grateful for the beautiful journey you had as a student of IIT Kanpur. Despite the years that have passed, I'm sure all of you remained young at heart. Yes? No? So why don't we begin today by relieving our old days and becoming young, rowdy students once again? Yeah. Shall we? <laughs> so uh, what I'll request is uh, to clap with me three times and shout 50 as loud as you can. <laughs> that was good. We can try once more. Okay. So again, three times with the rhythm and 50. Thank you. So let me take you through a short trip down the memory lane. 55 years ago, 314 young boys and one girl from across India decided to embark on a challenging journey away from the comforts of their home all the way to a city once called Kanpur, now named Kanpur to be a part of this prestigious institute called IIT Kanpur. It was an era of Shami Kapoor, Rajesh Khanna, Madhubala, Sharmila Tagore, Hema Malini. <laughs> Aradna, Johnny Miranam, Bobby, Pakiza were blockbusters. 
and the famous bollywood song that asked for maximum number of repeats was <laughs> how about monica <laughs> Famous villains were Pran, Ajit, Ajit Khan, Prem Chopra, Ranjit, and Vamps were Bindu, Lalita, Nani, Nadira, and Helen. That's correct. Chai das paise ki thi, Coca Cola char aane ki, Will's Navy cut saat paise ki, Golden Eagle three rupees ki, or Narangi two rupees ki. हेयर कट आठ आने में हो जाता था मिस बिल आई टी फीस ओके सो वट आई हैव मिस बिल पचहत्तर रुपए का था आई टी फीस सोलह रुपए की और हॉस्टल फीस आठ रुपए पचास पैसे की Chungfa, Futu were two go places in the city. Shart Hari ya Jiti. Chunging saare three rupee me ho jati thi. Chunging bolle to Chungfa ka dinner. Shashi canteen ka hakka chow and red rose was famous in the campus. Rang. Red uh, red rose was famous for chai. But do you remember that special chai which was served in the teapots? <laughs> Famous jargons at the adda point were fatru, fudda, sood, chap kar diya, chap diya, max kar diya, tail ho gaya, and bucket. How many of uh, I don't think anybody would have missed visiting Sheba, Regal. Heer Palace, Sundar Takis for entertainment. Kannu Nautanki at Kalyanpur was another major attraction. And how many of you remember that trip to Bithur for a mujra party on the last day of the fifth year? Don't name them. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going beyond that. <laughs> Movies in L7 on Saturday and Sunday night was a major attraction. Or uske baad. तालाश शुरू होती थी माइक सिंह की माइक सिंह बोले तो सरदार जी जो एल सेवन में माइक अरेंज करते थे एंड द मोस्ट कॉमन फ्रेज यूज ड्यूरिंग द मूवी टाइम वॉज रिपीट एंड फोकस गेटिंग स्टक एट रावतपुर फॉर लैक ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्टेशन वॉज अ रियल पेन Thanks to Bara Number Ki City Bus, which would run in every few hours. Otherwise, Kiara Number Zindabad. A quick rapid fire for all of you about the doctors sitting in the health center. Whom would you visit if you are sick? Doctor Sikka. Whom would you visit if you are bored? Dr. Borbankar, and a quick MCQ. Does anyone remember the name of the travel agency? Geeta, Deepa, Sita. Sita, correct. Talash rehti thi Shishu Pal ji ki, as he would do odd jobs. Or intezar rehta tha Shiv Charan ji ka. Shiv Charan ji bolle to mail messenger, who would bring admission letters, scholarship letters, appointment letters, including. शादी के प्रपोजल लेटर्स विद गर्ल्स और बॉयज फोटोग्राफ इन साइड दैट डस एनी वन रिमेंबर नकवी वो नकवी का टेम्पो था हु वुड फेरी मोर देन ट्वेंटी पीपल फॉर फन राइड एट नाइट और ये सेवेंटी फोर का टेम्पो है हु थ्रू वेरियस इनिशियटिव हैव टच लाइव एंड गिफ्ट इट चीयरफुल स्माइल्स The brawl between Hall Two and Hall Three had always been famous for various reasons. Battle of supremacy would range right from competing for cultural festivals to sports to mass shouting from rooftops during blackouts to gali competition. It only reminds me of a famous quote by Atal Bihari Vajpayee ji: "Kaurav kaun? Kaun Pandav? Tedha sawal hai. Dono or fella?" 
Shakuni ka koot jaal hai. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an honored badge to have former Prime Minister, Mr. Morarji Desai, Indira Gandhi, visited the campus during their stay. And other dignitaries, including Pillow Modi, Tara Keshwari, Keshwari Sinha, Mr. Ravi Shankar, YB Chavan, and well-known spiritual guru, Mr. Mahesh Yogi Ji, to visit the campus during your stay. Sonal Mansi. Sonal Mansi. And Kushwan Singh. Ivi Marghi. A studious batch to still remember the electrifying lectures of Dr. C. N. R. Rao, Dr. P. K. Ghosh, Dr. R. N. Biswas, Dr. T. M. Srinivasam, Dr. Anand Krishnan, and Dr. L. S. Srinath, who and Dr. L. S. Srinath. The famous anecdote by one of the professor while teaching ESC 342 was. Just like we have Divedis, Trivedis, and Chaturvedis, in electronics we have diodes, triodes, and tetrodes. <laughs> A dynamic bat who showcased their managerial skills by managing the mess strike in Hall 3, where faculty, spouses, and students collectively cooked food and managed a mess. A sincere bat who was asked to arrange Bakri Ka Dudes for a very, very important person, guest, Sri Murarji Desai. This bat struggled and managed to find Kali Bakri, which at the last minute turned out to be Kala Bakra. <laughs> but our Shravan Kumars didn't give up and succeeded in, get, in getting Kali Bakri Ka Dudes as directed. And finally, a blessed batch. Because those teen so pandra ladko me ek hi ladka kabil nikla as one girl chose her life partner here. <laughs> That's fine, sir. In IT, can't. <laughs> I can't, personally, I can't personally share all your recollections of IIT Kanpur, but we talked with few of your classmates to try to get a closer look of the class of 1974, whose members have such nicknames. I request those who are present here to kindly acknowledge by raising their hand. Mouse. Sorry. Chops. Balki. <laughs> Bunny, <laughs> Guni, <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> Murgi, <laughs> Yogi, <laughs> so once more. <laughs> this is all I have from the treasure of memories of class of 1974. I hope I got my facts right. You missed the humanities faculty. Which one? Humanities faculty. Which uh, was more popular than the... Professor Usha Kumar. <laughs> Tell them. <laughs> uh, Professor Usha Kumar. Yeah. Mm. Ah, yeah, yeah. See, see the report. Uh, Dr. Mohini Malik. Mohini Malik. Okay. Mrs. A. Mahasha. Okay. Mrs. Tharu. <laughs> On this beautiful day, let's all remember to laugh, share fond memories, and make new memories that we can talk about at our next 50th reunion, about the next reunion. We are so pleased here that we gathered here, here today in person, something we cannot take for granted anymore. On, now, without taking any more of your precious time, I would like to invite Professor S. Ganesh, Director IT Kanpur, to kindly address the gathering. A very uh, good morning and warm uh, welcome to all of you. Uh, 50th uh, reunion, it's a wonderful occasion to host all of you and interact and uh, you know share uh, your memories and uh, what the Institute is doing or has done in the last 50 years and what are the plans. So that's the kind of a short summary that I have in my presentation. Uh, I would share with you and uh, I would certainly request uh, all of you to help us in our journey. So therefore, you can make uh, the Institute uh, one of the top leading research institute in the world. Uh, there are many uh, you know, uh, in this, uh, uniqueness about IIT Kanpur. Of course, the uh, computing 
facility and the training in that area is something that is really considered as, uh, you know, uh, IIT Kanpur considered as a unique place for that. And uh, that continues, the legacy continues. We have a 1.3 petaflop computer, and we are now moving uh, a new proposal to get uh, 10 petaflop, you know, supercomputer on campus. That's something that uh, in a private public partnership that is in advanced stage of, you know, sort of finalization. Uh, this is just a given overview of the campus today. Uh, one, of course, the campus, you must have seen that a lot of new buildings have come, but what we are very particular is that the, the campus remains green, and it gets getting green every year. We actively plant a large number of trees. Uh, that's something that we are very, very particular and proud about. Uh, the current faculty strength is close to 600. We have about 5,000 UG students and about 4,300 PG students. We are touching close to about 9,500 students on campus. We have about 200 postdocs, and we're extremely proud of our alumni base, which is 43,000 plus as of today. Uh, the name, the, you know, the, uh, the recognition that we have received is because of our students and especially the alumni. We are very, very grateful. 50 years, uh, I understand some of you are visiting First time as uh, uh, look, you have graduated, never visited the campus, and and there are many new departments and programs that have been added. Uh, so we have close to 24 academic units now. Uh, you can see that a large number of engineering departments, the ones that are identified in the red color font, are those departments that are established in the last few years. Uh, sustainable Energy Engineering, Department of Design, and so on. And before that, uh, you know, there are a couple like biological sciences and bioengineering was established about 23 years back. In the science stream, we have cognitive science as a full-fledged department. We have space, planetary, astronomical sciences and engineering, a new department. Uh, and, and, and of course, in, in humanities, we have economic science as a department that came in about 10 years back, you know. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a, it's a full-fledged undergraduate program in the discipline. It used to be part of Humanities and Social Science, now it's an independent department, which is doing exceedingly well. So we have also interdisciplinary programs, phonetic science engineering program, material science program, nuclear engineering and technology. They offer master's uh, and PhD program in the discipline. And we also have two schools that we have established recently, which I'll talk about a little later. Uh, this is something that is, uh, you know, is a, it's a new initiative that we have launched a couple of years back. This is called as online master's program, or the e-master's program, mainly for the working professionals for upscaling their you know, skill sets in the emerging areas. There are about 16, there are about 14 programs currently we offer, uh, four more programs in the pipeline, and these are all based on the industry needs, uh, and some of them are fully sponsored by the industry. Uh, this is a one year uh, minimum, uh, uh, you know, the one can graduate, but you know, they can, pace it the way they like. They can take up to four years to complete the program requirement and get a, a degree, which is we call as master's degree. Uh, this is very popular. Close to about 600 students are now recru uh, currently enrolled in these programs, and we have already graduated one batch of about 120 students or so. The undergraduate uh, programs are you know, it's something that is we are very, very proud of because it, you know, IIT Kanpur offers the kind of flexibility no other institute in the country offer. So we have, of course, minor programs, but what the students can do is to stay for one more year and get a double major or a dual degree, you know, either in their own department or across the department. That's something extremely, you know, uh, you know, uh, flexible program that we offer. It brings in a lot of challenge in. Um, you know, scheduling our courses, but still that we thought this is the best that we can offer. Uh, that's really as, uh, you know, for, you know, the students found it extremely useful. Uh, uh, the other uh, important thing is that we have brought in a lot of flexibility to the undergraduate program. Now it is credit based. In fact, a student can uh, do courses in the summer and take over uh, overload and then, you know, graduate even at the end of three years. Uh, it's, it's a credit based program. And then we have, uh, in, you know, sort of initiated what is called the honors and interdepartmental degrees, something we call also scheme. And then even if a student, you know, uh, goes on to do some 
uh, internship in a startup, and that you know time they spend during the summer and otherwise, that can be earned as a credit towards their credit requirements. So we encourage students to do that, and we also have exit program recently the Senate has approved for the undergraduate students who do not meet uh, you know, enough academic performance, therefore they can exit with what you call as a BSc in Applied Sciences. And uh, again, um, we also allow students to you know, credit MOOCs offered by various IITs or IACs where there is a proctored exam. They can use that credit as part of the credit requirement. This is only to encourage students to attend courses that they like, you know, subjects that our institute may not offer, but they are interested in, they can really, uh, you know, take, uh, you know, that such kind of courses and, uh, you know, uh, keep their interest open. In terms of faculty efforts, uh, we have grown really. Uh, you can see that in the last uh, five years, we have offered about 300 offers, faculty recruitment, close to 200 uh, faculty have joined. Uh, the current strength is about uh, 580. Uh, this is besides uh, the visiting faculty and, and professor of practice and emeritus fellow that we have. We can add another 30 in that, so it will be close to 600 that we have as on today. So faculty, uh, you know, this is something we are extremely proud of. Many of our faculty have been recognized by uh, the, the government of India in, in, in terms of Padma Shri awards or by, uh, for example, the Infosys Foundation. Uh, in the recently this year, two of our faculty colleagues have been awarded with the Infosys Prize. This again, it's a very highly competitive uh, you know, uh, screening procedure for that. Pro Professor Mugang Sur is part of it. Professor Sestal Tripathi from our uh, civil engineering and Professor Arun Shukla from biological sciences and bioengineering have been awarded uh, this year's uh, Infosys Prize for their contribution in research. Uh, likewise, the World Academy of Science recognized the outstanding contribution of the faculty in research. Uh, Professor Avinash Agarwal has been uh, recognized for this uh, fellowship last year. And also we have foreign associates. Professor Manindra Agarwal is part of the US National Academy of Science, which, uh, you know, really, and uh, these are some of the International recognitions, uh, um, uh, Godel, Ferguson, Quas, Scopus, and Humboldt Research Award, which really, you know, really sort of, you know, uh, highlights the outstanding research contributions from the faculty. And this is Shanti Shwarup Bhatnagar is again an award given to uh, faculty members who are under 45 years, who have done exceedingly well. And we have a large number of faculty who have been awarded with uh, this particular prize. And, I'm very happy to say that, uh, you know, I, among the IITs, this is the number of such award is IIT Kanpur ranks number one, uh, next only to IASC. Uh, thank you. So this research, you know, the, uh, the output that you see in terms of recognition, what faculty get is because of the group that work along with the faculty. It is not an individual contribution. And that is possible because of the ecosystem that we have built around uh, the academic departments. Of course, we have academic departments. We have interdisciplinary academic programs. But what we also established is the thematic research centers, which have dedicated focused research areas. And there are large facilities. And uh, faculty from diverse departments associate with such centers to contribute in the mission mode projects. So I will touch upon a few of them. And we also have uh, very good central research facilities. These are facilities that are open for all the students and faculty from the departments of the institute, as well as is open for uh, students from other institutes and universities to come and use the facility. So we have two new entities we call. One is a techno park, which also I'll give a brief about, which is uh, uh, a huge facility that we have established for uh, industry to come and set up their R&D facility here. And we also have an incubator called as FIRST, uh, which is, I would say, one of the best, if not the best, in the country in terms of uh, uh, incubation activities. <clears throat> so if you really look at the innovation index as the criteria, IIT Kanpur is ranked number one in the country in terms of you know, the research, R&D, and entrepreneurship. That's, that's we are exceedingly happy. And uh, in engineering, we are number four. And in, in overall university ranking, we are number five. Uh, so there are a large number of uh, you know, uh, products that have been uh, developed, and many of them have been commercialized. 
We have one, what you call as a Boo Pariksha soil testing device, which is an IoT based device for testing the soil for agricultural needs. Professor Jayan Singh is here, is a one of the leading members who sort of put together this product that is commercialized. Likewise, we have national blockchain for the e-governance I'll touch upon a little later, anti-counterfeiting technology. Again, it is licensed to a company. We have touch sensitive watch for blind and visually impaired. Again, it is taken over by a company. There are many other that are listed here. So, you know, what is uh, really heartening is that uh, nearly 14% of our IPR are transferred to the industry. This, if you really look at the conversion rate, which is uh, very good, even in international standards, like it's about average, if you see it's about 67%, but 14% is really good. And we really want to increase it and, and uh, you know, increase the, what is technology readiness level of any of our IPR is very high, therefore it can get into the industry uh, quickly. So that's something that we are working on. And these are some of the products that have already been commercialized. You can see that uh, that are on the screen. This is a summary about our incubation and uh, entrepreneurship activity. So we have uh, uh, an independent entity called FIRST, a foundation for innovation and research in science and technology. This is a Section 8 company fully owned by IIT Kanpur for holding the share for uh, the IPR that IIT Kanpur generates and that is being taken out by some of the startups. So we have close to 170 companies uh, in our portfolio which are on campus and as many companies have already graduated, the cumulative turnover portfolio is about 86 crores. Uh, uh, the companies have raised close to 380 crore funding, more than 4,000 jobs have been created. What is really, really uh, um, something that we are proud of is that 75, you know, 75 companies are women-led, you know, enterprises. You know, so we are also very extremely happy that these startups, on their own R&D, carried out at IIT Kanpur using the facilities and in in partnership with the faculty and students, have filed more than 50 patents on their own. So the total revenue is close to one crore. Uh, you know, that's that's what it is. Some of these are shown here. One NDU is a startup. Uh, launched by one of our faculty members in the aerospace uh, department. And the off-grid is, uh, again, a student-led, uh, mm, you know, a company which makes uh, a new uh, a, a battery for EV vehicles using very novel material. And this has got a huge funding from international firms recently. Uh, they are setting up a, a base for their R&D in Europe. And uh, uh, and Fool is another company which converts the, you know, the the flower waste from uh, various temples to different different products, styrofoam and many other products. And what also they have done is an R&D to create what is called as leather, or it's a kind of a vegan leather made out of these temple flower waste. And this is as good as leather, but it's a good alternative. Uh, all these companies have heavy heavy investment from you know uh, many of the investors. And some of them, we are expecting it to become unicorn. So these are some of the recognitions for you know, the, the startups that, that, that are from IIT Kanpur. Uh, uh, even, for example, vice president has commented about some of these uh, startups on their achievements. This is one startup called as Nokark. Originally, this company, uh, again, is a startup from one of the students, uh, the alum of IIT Kanpur. Uh, originally, they were, uh, you know, started to work on robotic devices for cleaning the solar panel because often the dust settles that brings down the efficiency. So they are working on that kind of a, you know, startup uh, venture. But during the COVID, uh, when there was a huge uh, crisis for ventilators, right? So this company, uh, along with the team of faculty and alumni and a team of doctors, uh, worked together to create the ventilator that you see on the left side. It's an uh, invasive portable ventilator, uh, which is as good as uh, any of the imported model. But the uniqueness of this particular uh, old project is that from the product design on paper to the commercial uh, you know, production of this happened in about 11 months. That's the incredible speed at which it happened. And especially during the complete lockdown and when the supply chain was completely disrupted, so all the components of this is sourced from within India uh, that is an incredible achievement. In fact, currently more than 5,000 installations in hospitals, this particular unit has been installed. 
and the price is about 40% of what you get in an imported model, and they are now exporting. And not only they are exporting, they have come up with uh, a ventilator for pediatric use. That is something that is very rare, not many companies make. I mean, that's an incredible achievement. And there is a book uh, uh, which says the ventilator project, which pretty much covers as to how this whole project uh, sort of conceived and executed during challenging times. Thank you. <clears throat> so we have uh, dedicated centers uh, which which have a you know thematic research areas wherein you know faculty and students from different departments join together. One we have Center for Nanosciences, which has its own facility as well as uh, funding for sustaining the research activities. There are a number of uh, projects that they have done, and some of them even have you know, spun off as a company. You can see the development of MEMS for micro cantilever sensor for mycobacterium tuberculosis, you know, detection, the TB. And likewise, there are many other that are listed. In fact, uh, some of you are in India who have used this mask called Swasa mask. You know, that is uh, a company called eSpin. Nanotech is a company that, that's a, you know, is a spin off from this center. And this Swasa mask was, uh, uh, manufactured here on the campus during the lockdown. So the first uh, one year, that plant was very much on the campus to meet the demand because there was a heavy uh, demand for the mask as well. These are uh, N95 masks. So we also have what is called as National Center for Flexible Electronics. Again, this is a, a very high-end facility for printing uh, electronic circuit and a variety of surfaces, including cloth or any other surface. Therefore, it's called as flexible electronics. And they have a very focused area that is again listed there, medical electronics, display, lighting, anti-counterfeiting, organic cells, ink, logic, memory, and so on. So they have also a kind of came up with a link ink, which you can draw or you can print that can really become a circuit. And uh, you know, they have already licensed to another product. This is a wearable uh, uh, device for early breast cancer detection. So that's uh, in is the center. If you have time, I would request that you could visit some of this place. So we have a center for cybersecurity. Uh, it's also now we call a C3 High Hub, uh, which is the first research lab and test bed for critical infrastructure, in, especially in cyber uh, defense and so on. So it, it it's pretty much provides tools for protection of all critical infrastructure, like power grid, or stock exchange, or shipping yard, and many other uh, defense applications. In fact, uh, you know, the government would send out any electronic device, including the mobile sets that are introduced in the country to this particular center to check how uh, secure it is in terms of uh, cybersecurity. Uh, uh, you know, this is, this is uh, one of the heavily funded centers, and it has a tie-up with a large number of uh, industry as well, and in fact, uh, this center is mentoring close to 25 companies, uh, startups in cybersecurity alone. Uh, you know, the center also has taken up uh, kind of uh, uh, cybersecurity audit for a large number of organizations in the country. So we have uh, established another center called Mehta Family Center for Engineering Medicine. Uh, this was established with the generous support from Mehta Family Foundation from the U.S. Uh, uh, it has three verticals, mainly in the intersection of engineering and medicine, as you see that uh, regenerative medicine, molecular medicine, and digital medicine, uh, mainly driven from the biological sciences and bioengineering, and many other departments uh, you know, put together, they are working on many of these projects that are, that are listed there. So we, we have uh, what we call as a 5G test bed. It's a facility that is created uh, with the Government of India funding. Uh, what is uh, really heartening is that not only is a test bed that is open to industry to come and test their devices, but also the technology that is developed here uh, in partnership with IIT Madras, uh, the 5G RAN technology is licensed now to Tejas Network, a Tata group owned company, and this is going to be the backbone of the telecommunication in the years to come. So that's something that is a huge contribution to the telecommunication sector in the country. Uh, many of these inventions, discoveries, discoveries have been you know, highlighted by the Prime Minister uh, during his address and tweets and so on. Some of them just I shown in the slide before. So the other center that we have established is a center for developing intelligent systems. So here, a group of faculty who have expertise in AI and ML uh, you know, uh, who work together. Uh, this is mainly to 
uh, you know, uh, you know, as its re return, dedicated to rapid development prototyping of intelligent software systems for solving problems arising with, within India and, eco you know, uh, Indian ecosystem. And this, this they catered to a large number of industry as well and Government of India initiatives, uh, unique hybrid of academic center with translation focus, and some of these have been listed there. So uh, one uh, particular output of this particular center I'll touch upon a little later. So we have a center of excellence for unmanned aerial vehicle. This is part of the aerospace engineering department. Uh, we have huge funding for this uh, program. We also offer an MTech program in unmanned aerial system with support from the Ministry of Electronics and IT. And even the UP government has funded about 15 crores for this particular COE because there is a great potential for UAV in terms of market needs. And we need uh, people who are uh, you know, uh, sufficiently trained not only in uh, having the startups, but also in many other applications. So that's something that, uh, you know, be the first IIT to establish that kind of a center. So this is the one uh, outcome that I mentioned about the Center for Intelligence System. So this is what we see here, the centralized public grievance redress and monitoring system, popularly known as CPGRAMS, is a AI engine-based uh, platform, uh, which is hosted by uh, the the PMO Prime Minister's Office, which 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 gets you know grievance any any citizen can uh, log in and post their grievance. So and the number in a day is mind-boggling. Uh, it could be in any of the Indian languages. Uh, so what this system does is that it really sort out the you know complaints and grievance based on the context, not just the text and. And, and really sort it to the relevant department and does the follow-up as well. So this is one of the you know, uh, uh, you know, contributions from the institute to cut down the time taken in addressing many of these grievances using this portal and considering its, its, uh, uh, its impact in, in public, uh, uh, you know, uh, the government has given this award, national award for e-governance, silver medal. Uh, by the Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Grievance, Ministry of Personal and Public Grievance Pension. That's something that uh, we really find, uh, you know, it's to be something, a great contribution to the country. So we also have what is called as a DRDO Industry Academy Center for Excellence. DRDO is Defense Research and Development Organization, uh, the Ministry of Defense, you know, R&D wing. Uh, so now they have uh, enabled uh, large-scale partnership, long-term partnership with academic institutes for defense technologies and uh, you know few institutes across the country have been identified each with them thematic focus areas id kanpur is identified for materials as a large application so this is mainly to have a global leadership and self reliance because otherwise we are heavily dependent on other countries for our defense applications uh, so the verticals that are listed there printing on flexible electronics the flexi center is coming in Advanced nanomaterials, nanoscience centers comes in, accelerated material design and development, high energy materials, bioengineering, these are disciplines. And uh, you know, two of the colleagues uh, from the institute who head two of the verticals are here, Professor Kantesh Balani and Professor Jayant Singh. They could provide more details as to how what the center is uh, doing and what kind of an impact that we could make. I mentioned about the techno park, a research park, uh, the facility that is established by IIT Kanpur, where industry can come and set up their R&D basis. And it is a, it's a kind of an in, uh, uh, rental model where the rent goes down as they engage more with the institute. It's in terms of the funding they bring in, in terms of the grants they provide, and so on. Uh, I'm extremely happy to tell you that so we have a good number of companies, currently about 20 of them, and then we are moving into a large facility which can house more companies. In fact, a large section of this new facility is already taken over by uh, a pharma company called Loras Lab. They have already funded a large number of projects. They are investing close to about 100 crore in setting up what is called a GMP facility uh, uh, based on an IPR transferred from one of our colleagues from the Department of Biological Sciences and Bioengineering for gene therapy applications. This is mainly for disorders that, that arise due to defect in your gene. So the idea is to put back a correct copy of the gene, therefore it could be a, a fantastic 
uh, therapy uh, you know approach the biggest challenge is of course what kind of vehicle you use uh, this is uh, a, a vehicle that has been a kind of a platform that is developed here based on the virus that are normally present in your body therefore it doesn't really cause any immune reaction so that's something that's coming up so we have licensed the technology to them and uh, they are setting up a huge facility <clears throat> We also signed uh, an MOU with the uh, UP government, along with uh, one of the, the UP government's cancer care center, uh, which is mentioned here as KSSCI, uh, for uh, you know uh, uh, diagnostic application. This is the Carquinos Healthcare Private Limited is a company, which is started or funded by both the Reliance and Tata Trust, and their main application is uh, diagnostics. In fact they would do uh, diagnosis, genomic screens for uh, cancers free of cost. So this, sent, this particular facility is being set up in Lucknow, and they will generate a large amount of data. That data is going to come to IIT Kanpur because we are our knowledge partner. We are going to use that genomic data for predictive medicine, for identifying risk early uh, risk uh, uh, markers, and so on. So this is uh, going in a big way, so we have already signed an agreement. The facility is coming up. And in phase two, a very similar uh, uh, diagnostic center, uh, the high-end platform, which you call as a next generation sequencing platform that will be set up on campus as well. <clears throat> so this is uh, something that an outreach from the Institute. Uh, the Government of India has set up what is called as Indian Institute of Skills. Uh, there are three such institutes that have been set up. One in Mumbai, the other one is Ahmedabad, the third one is Kanpur. The Mumbai and Ahmedabad uh, institutes are run by Tatas and Adanis. Uh, and this third one, that is at Kanpur, uh, is, uh, you know, IIT Kanpur has agreed to be the mentor. We will be running this uh, center uh, or institute for the first uh, five years. So what we have identified, unlike the other two ins institutes, is to really uh, train the workforce in the new age technologies. There are five verticals that are identified based on the industry needs and also the kind of a scope of the industry that would come in Uttar Pradesh uh, state, you know, because there's a defense corridor around Noida. There's a lot of development now because the new airport, there are infrastructures being created. So what uh, we have, uh, what we are setting up as part of the IAS activities, robotics and automation, advanced manufacturing, agriculture 4.4, advanced defense technology and healthcare. These are the verticals where you would be training the youths. And also we would be training uh, the working professional in different uh, companies. HAL is already a partner. We are running a huge program for them, HAL uh, trainees. And uh, this we are going to do with the partnership with a number of company. In fact, yesterday we signed an agreement with uh, a, a company called Amtronics Private Limited. They have setting up a huge facility, which you call a Center for Excellence for Electronics. This is mainly for manufacturing. This is open to all the startups for our, our uh, faculty and, and the students. Plus, we will be using this facility for training uh, the youths. Therefore, they are ready for the kind of industry that might come in next five years, including the areas like semiconductor technologies, embedded system, IoT, AA, and so on. So that is the plan. Uh, uh, they have already invested. We'll be soon signing an MOU with uh, HAL, Industrial Aeronautics Limited, for a very similar kind of a center on campus in much bigger scale, and with an understanding that we'll be running it for more 10 years period. This is another major initiative. It's called a Squatex School of Sustainability, uh, uh, which obviously is a school that would have uh, impact beyond the academics. We are looking at how we can engage with the government, uh, local government, how we can impact the society as well. So it's besides the academic program, so this is this school is funded by Kotak Mahindra Group. They have, uh, in their first pledge, they have already agreed to donate uh, close to 120 crores for this school. Uh, you know, the blueprint is ready. So we will be, uh, you, know, you know, this already been launched in November last year. And uh, one of the departments, that, you know, is part of the school now. Uh, so we would be, planning the expansion activities as agreed upon as part of this particular initiative. So we have, uh, you know, centers, uh, thank to our alumni for their support, both in terms of, uh, you know, funding or, uh, you know, such centers, uh, new initiatives, and also in guiding us, you know, as to what should be the focus area and how we can, 
really have a larger impact beyond the academics. Uh, for example, we have a center for Chandrakanta Keshavan Center for Energy Policy and Climate Solution. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Sudhakar Keshavan, one of our distinguished alumni, you know, funded this center. In fact, I would say uh, this center is sort of was a seed for the School of Sustainability because he's someone who really worked along with us in, uh, you know, in making the vision much broader and looking at uh, as to what are the needs and how we can get more funding for this. And we are very, very grateful to him. And in fact, as part of the center, we also taken up a project for net zero you know, on campus. And that's something that we are working on. So we also have center, uh, uh, Shivani Center for the Nurture and Reintegration of Hindi and other Indian languages, funded by one of our, again, another alum, uh, Mr. Muktesh Pant. Uh, this is, again, center provides a soft landing for students who enter our institute. You know, they mostly study, come from vernacular language. They find it difficult when they come in to, you know, sit through the courses in English. So it really provides them the soft landing. So in fact, that's a part of the mission we have been translating many of the you know, technical books into different languages as well. So there are other uh, academic and R&D infrastructure that we could establish with the help from the donors. One we have is Dr. Ranjit Singh Roji Siksha Kendra. Um, this is a center that really looks at how we can empower uh, you know, the rural uh, community, uh, not only in terms of vocational training, but even in education. In fact, this particular center, uh, again, has formally is going to sign an MOU with the UP government. This is, has got two mandates, one to train the teachers for their teaching skill sets, you know, to how to improve for the STEM areas. And the other one is, of course, directly offering courses to a large number of students through the video conference mode. So we have already taken up a couple of pilot projects where in, in a few districts have been chosen and classrooms have been set up, virtual classrooms, and many of our faculty are contributing to this particular aspect. The other one is, of course, you know, uh, you know, giving vocational training to uh, uh, the youth in the rural area, especially women. And I would really request, if some of you have time, please visit this particular center, and you yourself can see what kind of products that they make. You know, these are all, you know, something that is trained by the center and they can go back and then start their own uh, entrepreneurial activities. And uh, again, we are very, very grateful to Mr. Jagjit Singh Bindra. He has uh, really helped us to set up this unit operations and innovation lab as part of chemical engineering department. And uh, one Mr. Jay Pulur, who passed away, his family pledged a huge amount of money for setting up what is called as Jay Pulur non-invasive brain simulation lab as part of our cognitive science department and also uh, the refurbishing of the reading room in the Kelkar Library. We are fortunate to have their funding support. This has been completely renovated, which provides better environment for the students to sit and read in the library. Just to give uh, a brief about the kind of international collaboration that we have. When I say collaboration, we are not talking about research collaboration that faculty have. That is, you know, is expected. It's a routine that happens at the individual level. But what we are discussing is about how the institute is collaborating with other leading institutes or universities in terms of joint programs. You know, we have 14 joint degree programs. When I say this is mainly at PhD, so we have the PhD is offered by both the universities for the same work. So there's a kind of a joint degree. Uh, uh, just to give an idea, like we have one with the National Chiotang University in Taiwan and mainly in electronics, in, in devices, in semiconductors. And then in, with the New York University, Tanton School, uh, that is in computer science and electrical engineering, with La Trobe University uh, in smart cities, you know, from civil engineering to, you know, uh, management to humanities in that area. So we have close to about more than 100 students currently who are in this joint degree programs. Uh, there are other options, like, for example, joint supervision, but the degree is given by IIT Kanpur, and we are also extending the joint degree program to MBA. There are two leading US universities that have shown interest. This program has been approved by our Senate. We will be taking it to the board for you know, approval. Similar way, we have done it for the Master of Technology as well. So there are many, many universities. For example, University of Melbourne, we have a joint degree PhD program. They are very keen for joint master's program in computer science and electronics. So that's also we'll be launching very, very soon. That also gives an opportunity for students to learn from two leading universities 
and then and, and that brings in a lot more visibility to them and also the institute because we enhance the collaborations. There are other avenues of collaborations as well. This is just to show that uh, the different uh, MOUs and um, you know, events that are related to the uh, joint degree programs. So academic infrastructure, as you have seen that the institute has really grown over the last uh, 10 years. It has become double, in fact, in terms of the student strength, faculty, and also the infrastructure that we have. Uh, space, money is something that no one is happy with. No matter how much you bring in, there is always a need for more. And, and uh, we are building uh, uh, you know, several new uh, uh, academic research complexes as well as the residential uh, you know, uh, accommodations that also is needed. So we have completed all these things. The Diamond Jubilee Academic Complex is the largest building on the campus. We have what you call as engineering science building which houses the academic departments, their labs, build, you know, ES building one, two, three, four, and then we have the old core lab has been extended by adding one more block. And these are uh, some of the accommodation, like you know, uh, request as well. For example, there is a type three apartment for faculty. One hundred twelve apartments have been added. What you see in between is Mehta Family Center for Engineering Building, and then we have hostels that are added and the huge. Techno Park, what you see, this is where the industry come and set up their labs there. And we have a research complex coming up. This is where all these uh, you know, huge research centers are going to be you know, set up, whether it is a DRDO uh, uh, center for defense applications, whether it is a data center, all these are going to come up in this particular center. So alumni engagement, I think that's something uh, that I'm sure all of you uh, are eager to know. Uh, so we have set up uh, IIT Kanpur Development Foundation, a Section 8 company, which is main mandate is to is to engage with the alumni and also help in the fundraising and and also uh, you know telling the alumni as to what are the developments, how the fund has been utilized, and we are very very grateful to our alumni who are all the board of this particular company, uh, Dr. B V Mohan Reddy. Mr. Raju Ranjan, Raju Swarup, and uh, Mr. Kapil Kaul, he's the CEO of this company, and Jayant, uh, in his term as the Dean Resources Alumni, this particular company was set up. Uh, and it, it's, it's really changed the way you know, we, we interact with the alumni and the way we could raise fund as well. So that's a professional you know, uh, uh, approach has been brought in. I'm sure you would, you would uh, appreciate the change, and there's, of course, a lot to improve, uh, which we would be very eager to understand from you on how we can improve, and your contribution would be we are very, very grateful to. Due to these efforts, you know, we are able to increase our uh, fundraising activity. Uh, we can see that in the last uh, financial year, 22-23, uh, our fundraising has gone to about 180 crores. Uh, the split is on shown on the right side, alumni, non-alumni, and also the you know, corporate social responsibility. That funding also has played a big, big role in our funding, uh, fundraising activities. This is something that we really want to replicate. And uh, you know, among the IITs uh, for the previous year of 22-23, IIT Kanpur has raised more funding than any other uh, in the last year. And this year is difficult because IIT Bombay, one donor has donated a significant amount. It's going to be extremely difficult for us to match that. Very, very thankful to alumni who have contributed. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's not just uh, the financial help, but beyond that, you know, their wisdom, their, their, their uh, vision, their advice and support really helps us in many different ways. Uh, we are very, very grateful to them. Uh, and these are some of the alumni engagement uh, with, of course, with the, with, with the IITK uh, Development Foundation. We have also ramped up our alumni engagement. Uh, these are some of the events that happened in 2023, in different parts of the country, uh, the world rather. You can see it is in Sydney, we have it in Washington and so on. And on campus, uh, last year, 22, 23, uh, you can see the number of uh, reunions that we have hosted, uh, which really, uh, is something that we, we really look forward to because you know having alumni back on campus and 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 you know interacting with them is something that we cherish and uh, 
in, and having their input in many of the activities also something that we value. And these are some of the pictures from the many reunions. And this is this year. And this is the last reunion for this session. And we'll have a break, and it will start again in November uh, onwards that we have scheduled the next you know, cycle of reunions. Thank you very much for you know, being with us. And I will end my talk with you know, one of the major projects that we have taken up. Uh, and this is also a blueprint that helped us to launch our Quotac School of Sustainability as well. This is Gangwal School of Medical Sciences and Technology. What you see is a rendering of the huge complex that is coming up, uh, which is a 500-bed hospital, which you named as Edipati Singhania Super Specialty Hospital, and an academic block and the residential block that is coming up. This is a school of medical sciences and technology. So the genesis is that if you really look at the uh, medical universities in India or medical colleges in India, these are all standalone uh, universities. Very rarely you will have a medical school as part of a larger uh, university that have engineering science together and then wherein you have a interdisciplinary research as a focus area in the medical uh, education because Traditionally, these are set up to for training people for healthcare needs. Therefore, their mandate is very different. And as a result, if you compare the medical universities with, with the IITs or IICs, you, know, you can see that these, these institutes are in different league when it comes to uh, research and in innovation, product development, and industry, academia interaction. They are far ahead as compared to any of the medical uh, uh, universities, uh, more so because they have a huge burden of taking care of the patient. They don't probably have, don't have much time. And, and, and their uh, training also is very, very different. And considering the need that we should uh, really uh, promote uh, the research and innovation in medical, uh, med, med tech, and in the cross-disciplinary areas where the technology could be a great leveler in, in addressing the healthcare needs, we are setting up this particular medical school. Uh, as I said, this is a super specialty hospital. So the discipline, clinical disciplines that are listed there, that is what our first phase, 500 bed hospital. It's a greenfield project. We have uh, this budgeted is about 700 crores. We have given 30 acres of this campus. On the other side, I'll show you uh, for this particular campus. And uh, in addition to the hospital, what we have set up is the center of excellences. These are you know, areas that are identified based on the need in the country and also based on the expertise that we have. So you can see that there's a telemedicine, robotics, cardiovascular and pulmonary disease, orthopedics, non-invasive imaging, and so on. So we have close to about 80 faculty members from different departments of the institutes are already associated with this particular center and medical school. So soon we will be, maybe next year, we'll start hiring clinical faculty members. We have sort of budgeted about 70 faculty members. The ministry also already given clearance for that. We'll be part of this particular school. So it's, it's, a, it's a major initiative that, that we have put in. Uh, this is the Google map showing where the med school is coming up. Uh, it is on the other side. So the, for the entry for the patient will be from outside the campus. They will not enter the campus directly. Uh, and uh, we are very grateful again to the alumni for supporting it because the entire project we are uh, you know, developing based on the donations from the alumni and corporate. Uh, Mr. Rakesh Gangwal, uh, one of our alum and the, uh, uh, you know, one of the partners of Indigo, uh, he pledged a large sum, that's why the school is named after him. So we have four founders, or part of the founder circle, Mr. Muktesh Pant, Dr. Dev Juneja, Mr. Heman Jalan, and Mr. Anil Bansal, who again, not only funding this whole program, but really contributing to the vision and mission of the school is something that we are extremely grateful. And we have industry partners as well. Uh, we have the local Singhania group, JK Cement, has really given a huge amount of money for setting up the hospital and, and many other donors. You know, IBM has given, we have REC, we have HDFC Bank, ICAC Bank. There are many, many corporate donors as well so with that we are able to support us. Uh, as I said, each of these center of excellence has taken up a flagship project. Uh, each one of them do have, and I'm going to talk about just one of them. There are many other. Uh, this is uh, it's called as Hridayantra. So this is what you call as 
artificial heart or left ventricular assist device, that's the technical name, for people who have you know, uh, abnormalities in the heart and heart failure and leads to death. And they could uh, you know, uh, you know, have a better life if we are able to help their heart with implanting an LVAD device. They can have a reasonably comfortable life um, the rest of the life. So that is uh, possible. There are uh, devices, one of the leading companies you know, uh, in the world that makes it, uh, that can be implanted. There are many survivors in the India uh, uh, who are having this implant is able to spend very normal you know, life. But the biggest challenge has been that how expensive it is. It's more than 1.5 crores, the device alone, and leave the, you know, the medical expenses associated with the surgery and so on. So that's something that prohibitive that you really cannot do. And the challenge has been, has been how complicated the device is and, and, and it should not fail at all. So that's something that we have taken up as a, a project. And this is conceived, in, in fact, uh, Dr. Devi Shetty, who is the uh, brain behind the Narayana Hridhalaya, right? Narayana Health, which they call now. Uh, he's the one who sort of gave the problem to us and he has been a mentor who is closely uh, you know, helping us with this project as well. So we have a team of 20 fellows who are working, and there are you know, uh, seven or eight faculty members. Dr. Kantesh Balani is also a part of it. So what we have done here is that from the, in the earliest concept to the you know, prototype, we have done everything in-house, including the manufacturing. It was done here, designed, developed here on campus. So we have the miniature version of this LVAD device. It's, it's going to get into the animal trial very soon. Either we'll try with pig or buffalo. These are the two models that we'll be testing. So for all the tests that we have done, this device has done fantastic. Uh, so if the animal trial works, maybe in about one year, we should be you know, going into the clinical trials. The idea is that to bring down the cost of this device to under 20 lakhs. So that's, that's the whole process, we are extremely happy about it. All our mentors, clinical mentors, cardiac surgeons are very happy with the progress that we have made. And, and I'm sure that we'll be able to succeed in this endeavor. This is just to give an idea how we have taken up a project. Apart from that, there are a number of other projects that we have. Uh, you know, in fact, on the coming Monday, we are going to sign an MOU with uh, the, 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 the government of Uttar Pradesh for creating what is called as a digital health stack for the entire uh, uh, population of uh, Uttar Pradesh. You know, this is something that, again, being funded, will be funded by the ICICI Bank Foundations, close to 50 crores that they have pledged. The government has completely opened up their entire uh, wellness or primary health centers and wellness centers. The idea is to create a AA platform. And there we have many startups that are very good in IoT devices and point of care devices. We are going to deploy them and have the telemedicine and three districts, we are taking it as a pilot projects. And then if it works out, we'll roll out to the entire state of the UP. In fact, this AI-based digital health stack, we already sort of developed and given it to the uh, Ministry of Defense because the entire, all three armed forces, the health records are now being fed into this particular system. The uh, Armed Force Medical College you know, in Pune is a nodal center. And we are the backbone for them for the taking care of the entire health of all the armed force personnel in the country. So we are very confident that it will work. Uh, that's something that we'll be able to really contribute to the society. So this, as I said, is a 700 crore project. So we have already close to realizing about 500 crores out of it. And uh, there are many options through which the donors can really support. Uh, you know, if there are any, uh, you know, we could really share the details. Um, this is just to show these, uh, the resident doctors that are there. So the idea is that in not only research, but we are also looking at what is called as uh, education, medical education. Right now, we are looking at uh, the super speciality, what you call as a DM and MCH uh, in six, uh, eight different disciplines. But what we are really looking at is a program wherein students who join our engineering science background into our four-year undergraduate program will go on to earn an MD degree you know, after completing their thing. So they are going to be very different kind of a physician scientist as compared to any other MBBS traditional you know, medicals that India produces because the medical education in India is heavily regulated by the, uh, the regulatory authority. You cannot really deviate from any of the uh, 
uh, you know, syllabus or course or structure or anything, so that doesn't really allow. Uh, one of the reasons why IITs have been you know, successful is because we are able to come up with our own academic program. We don't need anybody's approval for such programs, and that uh, doesn't happen. We don't have the flexibility of doing it, even if we offer an MBBS program. So we are in touch with the uh, University of Melbourne. Uh, one of the top medical schools in the world is their ranking is in the top 40. Uh, they have something called as pathway program. Uh, you can be an engineer and then go on to do an MD so that we are in discretion. So there are many other academic programs that we are in discussion with them. So this is what we are aiming for. Maybe the country would be ready for that kind of a, you know, uh, 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 innovations in medical education as well, maybe five, 10 years down the line. So this is the studio apartment coming up. This is 90 studio, studio apartments for the resident doctors. Uh, we have done the Bhumi Puja in September. These are glimpses of the construction that's happening for the medical uh, school, the LNT has been awarded the construction, and um, these are some of these glimpses as to that we have signed up, you know, MOU for academics. So this is the goal that we have set up in 2021, um, five years as to what we should do and so on. So to bring in the overall faculty strength to about 650, so we are close to 600 now. Uh, you know, that's that's we are on the course of action then complete the expansion of academic infrastructure, it will be complete, and uh, build residential accommodation for the enhanced students' capacity. We have close to 9,500 students. We have a hostel for about 7,000 students, so we have a deficit of uh, significant number. So we are adding close to about uh, 2,500 seats. Uh, the constructions are in different stages. Of course, there are two schools that we have already launched, but we have to see that they are really functional, the Gangwal School and School of Sustainability. And of course, there are many other new uh, initiatives, like for example, School of Entrepreneurship, School of Data Science, and so on, so something that we have planned for. Um, the challenge, of course, is funding. Uh, the reason I'm saying funding is because twofold. One, the you know traditionally, the IITs have been funded by the government of India, um, and but you know, with the expansion, with the and, and also the establishment of a, in a new IITs, uh, that has become a challenge because there are 23 IITs across the country, and all these first generation IITs get support only for salary, pension, and fellowship of the students, right? So every activity that you do, whether you want to build something new, you want to buy a new facility, uh, you know, this you have to do it with your own earning. The, what are your earnings? Uh, the earnings could be from you know, the fee that you charge, but you know, 50% of our students don't pay fee. They are waived off, right? And then what they what they pay is also very, very little. Uh, for example, the master's and PhD students pay about 6,000 or 7,000 rupees per semester. That's the tuition fee, and when it comes to the undergraduates, about 40,000 rupees. So it's a very subsidized education, so therefore the fee doesn't really contribute. So we generate this funding from our you know, overage of our research projects from IPR transfer, tech transfers, and many other you know, such corporate uh, sponsored programs. So you know, what the government does, they give us a loan, uh, uh, and depending on how much is our earning, just like the home loan that you go and get based on your salary, and we use this loan to, for all the construction, whether it is academic, uh, building or the hostel or residential complex, everything, and repay the loan in 10 installments over 10 years. The government of India takes care of the interest, but then it cuts both ways because the earnings that you make, you know, you cannot invest in anything new, but you have to repay. So we have close to about 600 crore loan that has been taken. Uh, 400 crore already we repaid, and then we have taken up 400 crore more for new projects. Uh, that's something that we need to really, uh, you know, is uh, we are looking for how we can enhance our earnings, therefore we can invest more. So that's the major challenge in terms of funding. So that's for, of course, infrastructure, and beyond, besides then you have the scholarships and awards and travel grants for the students, because if you want to really attract bright students, you have to offer something that they would consider, you know, uh, as compared to any other option that they have. And so is the case of the faculty. If you want to really hire good quality faculty, you have to give them higher seed grants for them to kickstart their research labs, and, and of course incentives in terms of awards, chair professors, and so on. So there are many ways uh, you know, the alumni could contribute. 
both in terms of resource and also in you know various involvement in institute activities you know we have visiting faculty adjunct faculty professor of practice position that you know really helps us to attract you know the alumni who have done exceedingly well in the corporate or academics to help us in many of these programs and also you know if you could take part in the ranking process you know what the institute is and if you could rank that that's one way of helping the institute as well so so there are roadmaps. We have grand vision. There are a lot of data here. I will not detail everything. But we have really looked at, you know, in next five to 10 years, where, how we should really look at it. That's what listed here. What is your strength? What is your weakness? How other institutes are doing? Where you can make our own a kind of a unique, you know, uh, uh, attempt that would differentiate us from others and so on. So, you know, details, I can really show it later. So we identified areas where you can really do well. Uh, you know, so these are some of the targets that we have set, but we are working on many of these. The details we can share because there are too much data, so I don't want to really share now. But those who are interested will be very, very happy to uh, discuss, have your feedback, and, and see how we can work together. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. <laughs> I'll be happy to take any query questions that you may have. Yeah, yeah. See, the earlier session highlighted an action plan for improving the overall ranking of the IIT system. When we passed out, we had a very high ranking. What I would like to know is what has been the major reason for the downfall in our overall ranking compared to the other institutes? Uh, when you say ranking, perhaps you are referring to the JE ranking. Is that right? Right, so uh, there are two factors. One, I wouldn't say is a downfall. I would also say that the other institutes have done exceedingly well. They have really come up, you know. And second, you know, if you really look at, you know, we have really interacted with a large number of students as well. Uh, uh, if you, the question is, uh, where do the top 100 students go? And that's, I think you are looking at the undergraduate program, that's where uh, it, uh, you know, that often it is, Bombay, right? And and then followed by Delhi, not even Madras. But if you're really looking at the ranking, when I say ranking, not, not, not based on JEE, but on and the NIR of rank. When I talk about NIR of this is national, this conducted by the Ministry of Education, uh, the IIT Madras is number one, right? So there is there's no uh, one to one correlation between the JEE cutoff and how the institute is doing with whatever parameter you use, because every parameter has certain you know, variables. Uh, the institutes are not ranked exactly the same way, but that's in the bracket anyway. So you know, we have had a lot of interaction with the students to understand, but it looks that metros are more favored destination for the undergraduate students. You know, this is one of the major considerations, because Kanpur doesn't offer anything much besides the campus. But if you reduce the JE rank to 1,000, and if you look at where are the students, you would be much higher than, for example, you'll be only, you know, it, you are on par with Delhi, right? And behind us is Madras, behind Madras is Kadakpur. So that's, you know, how do you look at it? That's what it is. Yes, having said that, why we should not attract, you know, top 100, you know? So that is something that we need to work on. We need to give something that is unique that others don't have. Uh, we can try and do what we can offer within the campus. In fact, we do have a scholarship, which is uh, you know, given to anyone top 100 who come into IIT Kanpur. They're completely tuition fee waived and they're fully supported. They don't need to pay anything, even that kind of you know, incentives that we have announced. We hope to have some students entering into our program. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and these are some of the initiatives that we have taken. So we have to see how it works here. Yeah. See, just, this is just to echo something that you said, that IIT Kanpur is handicapped by the fact that Kanpur itself is not a metro. And in fact, if I go back over the last 55 years, <coughs> Kanpur as an industrial center has not stagnated. I think it has declined. When we joined, I think in North India, there were only two major industrial centers, right, right. Kanpur and I think Ludhiana. Now, Ludhiana is miles ahead. Kanpur is virtually nowhere. Now, obviously, if the industry activity in Kanpur improves, it will have multiple spin-off effects. For one thing, there'll be more people, businessmen coming to Kanpur, so probably there'll be a demand for more flights. 
so kanpur airport will take off i think that will be a major i think secondly if there are more companies here there will be major more, much more job opportunities for the spouses which is not there right now and that i think is a major handicap for kanpur in fact i am from management education i mean the feeling is that in due course bangalore i am will definitely overtake i am amdavad because of the better job opportunities now obviously iit kanpur cannot do anything in this regard directly but what i think it can do looking at the amount of investment that is being made in up by the central government and others probably if you approach our very dynamic chief minister and perhaps persuade him to look at kanpur as a major industrial hub to develop this as a major industrial hub get back its old glory and secondly uh, we also have the railway minister who is an alumnus of iit kanpur he is also holding the iit and iit and communications <coughs> portfolio maybe through him also we can get something done because unless kanpur develops i think there will be a cap on whatever we want to achieve i mean all these objectives are very laudable i'm not questioning them but achieving them will be a very big challenge going forward yeah thank you i mean i think your point is well taken on what you know what we can do is what best we can do within the campus and we can sort of help the government to achieve if they have certain targets and help them do it and uh, in fact in fact we are you know working with the government we, uh, you know if you uh, some especially the current government they have put in a lot of emphasis in developing infrastructure in the state therefore industry can come, come in so what they have declared uh, is the uh, you know the the bundelkhand area up to jhansi is declared as a defense corridor you know so that that's you know being developed and we are one of the knowledge partners for the state government in the defense sector uh, defense corridor project so we are setting up in fact even the drdo center that we are setting up is in line with that because it is expected that with the growth in the infrastructure of the state and the the airport that is coming up in the noida region right so this this area is about 200 kilometers from kanpur to jhansi area will attract a large number of defense industries to come in so when they come in this is going to be a nodal center for certification training and many other in fact even the skill center that has come in is with that very similar notion because there are you know uh, plans on that and hopefully you know it happens and maybe 5 10 years from now uh, you know it becomes more relevant to the local ecosystem thank you yeah uh, i was just wondering what is the sort of pool of attraction of the students who are coming to kanpur who choose to come are they coming from pretty much uniformly all across india or are they pretty much focused i mean uh, the pool is mainly in, in this area you know up madhya pradesh and all that yeah. and i think it's partly related to this but that's right the geography matters that's right yeah geography matters i think uh, it's pretty much true for all the world five iits right it's become pretty regional centric you know if, if, if there wouldn't be too many students who are coming from south to kanpur and that's true even for iit chennai there wouldn't be many students who are going from north to south right so it has become more regional uh, that is true i think they are sort of doing but and it so happened in this this belt you know the up madhya pradesh bihar you know the huge catchment area so to say in that uh, sense uh, the aspiration is to go to a metro right you know there are no model metros within this area and one is of course lucknow is a better city than the other cities but it doesn't have an iit right so it's a challenge as as you said there has to be overall growth the kanpur should provide an amenity like any other metro provides and in fact uh, you know one of you commented about the airport in fact the it's it's not that the number of flyers from kanpur is less in fact 50% of the flyers who take off from lucknow are from kanpur or adjoining areas right it is only that it somehow this particular airport is linked with the defense and this is a astri part of their uh, you know our air force they don't allow it and a lot of fight they are able to renovate the new terminal and we are hoping that it would become a uh, yeah, uh, uh yeah an airport which is connecting to all the metros and so on in fact you would be surprised you know you i am sure many of you know about the udan scheme where they are regional connectivity the most profit making sector is between kanpur and bangalore 
because this flight, any day you take, it's now they're suspended. Likewise, Bombay, you will hardly find any seat vacant. There, are, there used to be three flights a day, Mumbai, Kanpur flight. So it's not about you know, whether people are willing to, are they, you have enough uh, passengers, that's not the question. It is something else that somehow is not really pushing Kanpur ahead in development. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Sorry. In our time, you know, 50 years ago and following, the five original IITs have become world famous and highly respected. Do you have any fear that now having 23 is going to dilute the brand? No, I don't think so. Uh, the brand is because of two things, right? The quality education that we offer and how good the students who graduate, right? So what is the number that we are admitting? Each IIT is close to about 1,300 a year for a country of this size. Even if you have 23 IITs, 25,000 students, do you think that they are not great enough? I don't think so. Yeah. So it will take some time for them to reach where we are here because they have to have faculty. That's, you know, the quality faculty. And they have to develop infrastructure. And the faculty also have to have the experience to administer because all IITs is pretty much run by faculty. And that's one of the reasons why the governance model is very good, right? In any, any section is headed by faculty. They compromise, you know, they sacrifice their time for taking up that administrative position for three years, two years, and contribute. You know, it's a community effort. And we have senior faculty who are experienced in that. So these smaller IITs will take some time, but certainly they will be there in, in five years, 10 years down the line. In fact, if you just look at the second generation IIT, some of them have come really good, right? Yeah, they're really good, yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Director. I think it was an excellent presentation. Uh, and the stuff that you mentioned regards all the innovations and other stuff, somehow we, even being uh, from IIT, uh, we are not aware of these things. And I'm really impressed with the kind of stuff you showed in terms of what we've done with the industry. So I believe that maybe there is one way somehow you guys know better how to get it to the general public, something which we even didn't know, a lot of stuff. And uh, with regards to your comment on the uh, students, the toppers, in my opinion, it really doesn't matter who, whether you get toppers or not. Yes. At the end of the day, uh, they come through a certain entrance examinations, and, and I think everybody is capable. So things like that, I think we should look into. Thank you. I completely agree with you because the JE rank, if you re really look at the rank, the mark difference between those who are in 100 and they are in 400 to 500 is hardly, you know, a few marks. It doesn't really make a huge difference in terms of how good the students are. Yeah, I mean, they are good. And in, if any, if the placement is one indication as to how good they are, I would say IIT Kanpur ranks the best in terms of number of people placed in terms of the package they get. You know, if this is one indicator, you know, it beats all the metro IITs, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah there are IITs, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but they are not those who are Dana B Tech and kind of a people, right? You know, very few. But what you what you perhaps may appreciate the fact is that the master's students go and join ISRO because, in fact, you know, the contribution to the Chandrayaan is also, you know, there are many IITs who contributed because the old IITs and IIC have what they called as space technology cell. These are cells that are funded by ISRO. And many of their critical projects, they give it to IITs to do. In fact, we can hire MTech students to do that project. And if they contribute, this MTech student will directly placed in ISRO. Okay, they don't need to go through any recruitment process. So IIC and the four, uh, five IITs have this engagement. They have contributed not just in this, uh, the moon mission, but in many other projects as well. Yeah, it's part of it, yeah. yeah. I, I have a question. Based on your presentation, the last one about the funding. I'm concerned about that you are dependent now on, basically you have to, for capital expenditure, you have to generate internal resources. And I think one of the biggest priorities that's related to attractiveness of uh, the IIT to undergraduate students has to do with residential housing. 
several of my colleagues have rest said that actually compared to when we were here, mm -hmm. some of the halls of residence are in pretty bad shape. Right. Now, the fact is infrastructure like this, and I give the example of sewerage in cities because I've involved, involved in urban development for a long time. Uh, it's not easy to attract private money or donor money for these because they're not sexy. Sexy stuff is artificial intelligence, molecular engineering. And it's very, how are you going to, I mean, and you cannot really rely, given the price points of most students, et cetera, to recoup it from fees no, and can't. yeah. So I, what is your basic plan on improving residential housing here? It's basic and yeah, very yeah. difficult to raise money for. That's true, yeah. So let's, let's uh, contrast this with any of the leading universities in the US because we take often US as a benchmark. Is there a university in the US which offers residential accommodation for all its students on campus in subsidized rate? Answer is no, right? So the expectation from IITs is a tall order. You give subsidized education, no tuition fee. You have to do research. You have to innovate. You have to give accommodation for all your students. How much they pay? 1200 per semester. That's the seat fee, right? It's not even, you, can, you cannot even meet the maintenance of the hostel with that, right? So first of all, there is a huge expectation that the institute has to do everything. You know, if you say, for example, we are here for academics, you stay wherever you are. Come and do academics, you know? Our burden on infrastructure goes down, but that's not the right way, you know? It is like a middle-class family. What is a middle-class family? You have three kids, you have one bedroom, so you, kids cannot have separate room. The family spends money for their good education, thinking that with compromised living condition, they can go out and they do well, right? And that's how the middle class has become higher income, whatever it is, better living condition, because these people graduate, go and earn, they can give better back to the family. Here it doesn't happen too, because we graduate, we have more students coming in. So it's going to be a challenge unless you come to a situation where we are not going to give accommodation, right? So we have to take this you know, into account after maybe after some time, we have to make a decision that we'll not give accommodation for masters, we'll not give accommodations for PhDs, we'll give only for undergraduate students, that too only for four years. Then they will have a good living condition. But this is it's going to be a big, uh, issue in sustaining this activity. Maybe in two years, three years, we'll improve the situation. But it's a challenge, as you said. It's going to be exceedingly challenging solution. Uh, we have to find a way. Maybe it is not possible to give accommodation for every student who enter our institute here. That will put us at a bigger disadvantage. No, it's true. With already. the metros, with the met the metros. Well, let's, just to give you an update, already IIT Delhi doesn't give any accommodation for master students. They can't even build a hostel because they don't have land. So they already moved away. We do give residential accommodation for that because we give them, you know, if you really look at the gate ranking and what, what we attract for our postgraduate program, we are among the best. So that's the, you know, similarly, why we are able to attract good faculty here, as opposed to Bombay, Delhi, or Madras, is the living condition. We offer a living condition that is much better than any other country. So you have to have some, something which is, differentiates you, right? So, you know, these are the, that's why we are spending so much in constructing hostels, therefore, we'll be able to have good students coming in. So that's, you know, we are very serious on that, we are adding, 2,500 rooms, that means about 5,000 you know, seats. That's in the next three years, that's the expansion activity here. Thank you very much, really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you.